listen, y'all don't understand. You know, y'all lift me up every time you come here. Your energy, your life. I feel so blessed each and every day, and I do not take it lightly. So that's why I want to give you a huge thank you for being as amazing as you are and bringing me all this love, all your good energy. I hope you feel it coming from my heart, from me to you. Even you guys at home, thank you so much for watching and looking me upside my head, okay? Listen, all right, let's get this thing started. Y'all want to see my mug today? Is it, listen, it is fabulous, okay? It remind me of my nails. Do y'all see this? This came from Rosemary Robinson from Willingboro, New Jersey. She gave this to me. Now, she sent me this. She also sent me this cute video. But before y'all roll this video, look at this mug. Because not only are y'all amazing people, but y'all are creative, too. It's so pretty, I don't even know if I want to sip out of it. <laughs> OK? Some things be so cute, you're just like, no, nah, let's just put it up there so we can look at it. <laughs> this is one of those. So she made me a lovely video, too. So take a look. Hi, Jennifer. This is the cup for you. I chose this cup because um, she's a star. She's blingy like your nails. Uh, you're in Hollywood, she's an actress. She has her scarf on, she has her hair done, and she's superb. Love you and hope you enjoy it. Oh, hand wash only. I got it! <laughs> hand wash only, got it, got it, got it. Thank you so much for that, Rosemary. I love this mug. And I'm gonna have to get my nails done like them, too. So when you see my nails blinging like this, you inspired it, OK? Know that. Listen, yes. Another thing I love is hearing from y'all about your happy places. Y'all have been sending me and giving me so much life with them. I really love this one coming from Sharon Moore, who lives in Detroit. She says her happy place is with her daughter. I truly understand that. And she wrote me a little note. Can I read it to you? Here we go. It says, my daughter Tanae got married a few years back and moved to Florida. Whenever I see my daughter, whether it be Skype, Zoom, or when I visit her in person, it always fills my heart with joy. I definitely can relate to that, because it's nothing like our babies. They just bring us so much joy. Right, guys? So, Sharon, keep sending me your happy places by going to our website, thejenniferhudsonshow.com, or hit us up on our socials. All right. Now, I am so excited to talk to my first guest. He's one of the most popular sports personalities in the country. He always tells it like it is. His new book is called Straight Shooter, a memoir of second chances and first takes. Please welcome Stephen A. Smith. Thank you for being here. Oh, I done hit the big time. Oh, my God. What's going on, everybody? Listen, listen. This is such an honor to be here. I'm so happy to have you. You know you like the soundtrack of my house. You just play on the TV. I feel like this is full on manifestation because one minute I'm looking at them on the TV and now you're here at the Jennifer Hudson Show. You know. I'm touched, I'm honored, I appreciate it. But you know, when you talk about sound, I mean, don't compare me to you. <laughs> the spotlight, come on now. Uh-oh. I, I can't compare to you now. Oh, oh. It's good to be here. See, I don't take that lightly coming from you. That's right. Okay, so you've been covering the NBA for almost 30 years? Yes, I have. Wow. Yeah. Look at her. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. It's always hard to say, interview people that you're, I'm a fan of, so it's like, wow, you're here. No, sir, we good, we good. Okay, we good, right, we, good. we good. Okay, because he'll talking, tell it like you, it is. You're talking to your brother, we good. I love it's it. It's all good. <laughs> so the finals are coming up. What's, what's your thoughts about it? It's going to be tough. I think that when you look at the NBA, it's one of the more exciting seasons we've had because in the Eastern Conference, obviously, Boston, Milwaukee, Philadelphia stand out above the crowd, but you can't ignore New York and Cleveland. Right. In the West, it is wide open. Denver, yeah. you don't know how people are going to react in that altitude. You look at Phoenix, they now have got Kevin Durant, who yeah. I believe, when healthy, is the best in the world. He uh, is. And Devin Booker's no joke either. You've got to pay attention to that. Ja Morant and Memphis. Mm -hmm. Can't ignore them. They've had some injuries and stuff like that, but they'll be all right. <laughs> and to be quite honest with you, it's like they might they might bore people sometimes, and you might get upset because daggone it, they, they healthy one day, they injured the next yeah, with the Clippers. But when the Clippers are healthy, the Clippers are a team to be reckoned with. Kawhi Leonard, 
is that dude. When he's on the court and healthy, he's that dude. And Paul George is no slouch. And I consider Ty Lue to be one of the best in the business. And you don't count out King James. Come on. You don't count out King James. He said you what he said. You don't count out King James. Not at all. Oh, Especially God. this season, because it's so wide open. Remember, most of them are learning how to win. Of course, Steph Curry and the Golden right. State Warriors know how to win. Kawhi Leonard knows how to win. You get that. Kevin Durant's a champion, two-time champion, two-time NBA Finals MVP, knows how to win. But pretty much when you look at every team, yeah. there's no one that you can definitively say can't be beat. Okay. No one. Mm -hmm. This is not Jordan in the 90s. You there's see none that? of that going on right now. Speaking of Jordan, I'm from Chicago. Yeah. So do, do you know him? I know Jordan. You do? Well. Yeah, he and I just spoke the other day. Oh, wow. It's yes. like that. That's my man. I love him to death. We wouldn't be, I, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm just a journalist and a personality and commentating and all of that stuff. We would not be, people like myself would not be where we are if it were not for Michael Jordan. <laughs> it's like what he's done, what he's done for the game of basketball. And let me throw two other names in there, Larry Bird and Magic Johnson. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The, they're the reasons. When you look at where the NBA once was, if it were not for Magic Johnson and Michael Jordan specifically, mm. there would not have been a LeBron James. Wow. Not to this level. As a basketball player, sure. Yeah. But to be the guy, the iconic figure that he is, the global figure that yeah. he is, the businessman that he is, those two dudes stand out as guys that paved the way for all of us. All of us. You better tell him. Yeah. More with Steven when we come back. We're back with Stephen A. Smith. What do you think of the NBA fashion today? By Some the of it's challenging, Jen. <laughs> I mean, I, I, listen, I, I, listen. Let, let, first of all, let, let, let's be a, for, well. First of all, that is not an outfit to clap about. Not that one. <laughs> not that one. But 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 LeBron James has his moments where uh -huh. he looks on point. Um, Russell Westbrook, credit for bravery because he tries stuff. Maybe that none of us can think, think about trying. Uh, uh, Kyle Kuzma. I don't know what the hell he's thinking <laughs> half the time, but I give him credit for trying. But uh, again, the fact these guys, you know some of these guys go to Paris for Fashion Week? Uh -huh, I see They're in of. New York for Fashion Week. I mean, they are really trying to do their thing. Some of it works, some of it doesn't. That's fashion. It's a matter of style, whatever your taste is. It's yeah. just that sometimes their taste seems very universally accepted. Sometimes you look at them and say, you on your own. Okay. You on your own. I ain't trying. <laughs> I'm not trying. I'm not feeling that at all, you know? <laughs> And do I think I dress better than most of them? Yes. See, I, see, because I was going to... I do. I really do. I'm not going to lie about it. Well, all right, I, 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 I kind of feel that way. Yes, oh, so, I do. So you be pulling out your, your, your Sunday's best Oh, no doubt about too. that. I mean, listen, I'm, I'm on TV a minimum of 10 hours a week. Wow. All right? 450 hours a year. Because I don't work less than 45 weeks a year. So when I'm on TV and you're going to see me, I take it as, 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 I treat it with the seriousness it deserves because I yeah. want people to know the young whippersnappers on the come up. You don't get to oh. just look the way you want to look and present yourself the way you want to present yourself without, with your hand out for somebody else's money. You got to have a certain style that's it. appreciated right. and you got to be about your business. So when I'm on the air, I like you to look at me and know this brother's not playing. Ha <laughs> ha. And that's how, that's how I show up on the air most of the time. Most of the time. Most of the time. Now, I have, my, I have my days off when I try to go casual. Oh, yeah? But for the most part, I'm suited down 95% of the time. See, because they, they got your fashion. It's a picture. Yeah, Hold yeah, on. Yeah. What you got to say back? Let them know. Well, first of all, first of all, I will remind you that that is a black cashmere blazer, mm -hmm. all right, from, mm -hmm. from Tom Ford. That shirt right there, I mean, they're pulling out the collar because the collar was starched and tight and stuff like that. But look at that shirt. I mean, ain't nothing wrong with that shirt. Ain't nothing wrong with that shirt. Ain't nothing wrong with that ain't shirt. Ain't nothing wrong with it. And, and by the way, that's an off day. That's, that's an off not, day. I mean, I'm usually sharp, much sharper than that. I mean, I'm just, I'm just speaking facts. I mean, the evidence is there. I mean, it's, it's, I'm on TV all the time. All you got to do is call up the clip. There is nothing <laughs> to be said. You said what you said. I love it. I just love how to see men having fun with fashion, yeah. whether it's in sports, it's exciting and it adds to it. Well, let, uh, excuse me. I mean, ladies, you, you especially, y'all should love that. Y'all should love to I agree. trying to do that. I agree. Listen. Let me tell you, just, just a little word, because as a, as, a, as a brother that was raised by four older sisters and my mama, you know, let me, let me say this. If you run across a man <laughs> that don't care how he looks, 
he's not gonna care about a lot of things. You say that one more time. Because if you don't care about how you look, why should I trust you to care about anything else that matters? That is a great point. How you present yourself to everybody else does matter. Now, if you're in the privacy of your home or your backyard or something and you want to walk around with flip-flops, that's your business, okay? But if you're going to roll out in public, uh -huh. you need to be on your game to some yes. degree. Yes. Even if you're casual. It, I'm, 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 I'm casual. Even if you're casual, a, a lady should be able to look at you and go like this. Because we he, like He them. does, got, he got a little style. Right. He got a little style. Like a well-kept man. Yeah, that's a well-kept man. That's right. There go. By the way, there is no shame, fellas. There is no shame in getting the occasional manicure or pedicure. Okay. That's important. I mean, you don't want to walk around with stink feet or scratchy feet, scratching your significant other. You don't want to walk around with rough hands and stuff or dirty, filthy hands with nasty-looking fingernails. Come on, now. <laughs> you don't want that. I hope want the that. lie. You don't want that? You let him know. He told y'all, listen, more with Stephen. We'll be right back. We're back with Stephen A. Smith. Congrats on your book, Straight Shooter, New York Times bestseller. <laughs> Thank you, thank wow. you. Wow, yeah. and you dedicated it to your mom. Absolutely, I mean, my mother was a straight shooter. She was no nonsense, she didn't play any games. Uh, she passed away in 2017, God rest her soul, and she was um, the most wonderful woman I've ever known. Yeah. You know, she's, um, you know. I was one of those unorthodox mama's boys. <laughs> like, from the standpoint of the older I got, the smarter she was, but it took me being hard-headed and making mistakes to realize how brilliant she was. But um, I, I, I often say to people that, you know, for the first 45 years of my life, she passed away when I was 49. Mm -hmm. For the first 45 years of my life, I heard her tell me she loved me maybe five times. Mm -hmm. But I knew it every day. Mm -hmm. Every day. And that was her way. She was West Indian descent, St. Thomas, Virgin Islands. She would be like, I don't have to tell you. You know, you'll know how I treat you. <laughs> you know? And I'm like, I got it. And I always knew. I always oh. knew. So she was always straight up and she always held me accountable. But she was always my biggest cheerleader, my biggest fan. Um, and she was the one that always would, she would start every day and make me proud. Wow. That's what she would always say. A mother's love. And I'm, and I'm sure you've made her nothing but proud. Yeah. Wow. Okay, talk to us about your podcast, No Mercy. Tell everyone what it's about. Well, to me, um, I've been doing sports my entire career, and I've got a podcast, No Mercy, and it was very, very important to me because I own it, I operate it, it's my master's, my IP, it's all of that. I wanted to step out and show the kind of courage and the bravery that I needed to have in terms of betting on myself. And although that I'm surrounded and engulfed by sports pretty much every day of my adult life because it's the profession that I'm in, I just, I, know, I never want to leave sports, right. but I don't want to be limited by it either. Um, there's, poli there's political issues to get into. There's social justice issues to tackle. There's things in pop culture and entertainment. There's a lot of different things. And I wanted to have a platform and an outlet to really go about the business of showing people you can have a conversation with me about anything. Mm -hmm. We can have a conversation with each other mm -hmm. about anything. Yeah. yeah, you'll get your sports, and I'll never deviate from that at all. But that is not all I am. That is not all I intend to be. I'm 55. I'm not 95. I got a long life ahead of me. And I got a lot of things that I want to say and a lot of things that I want to speak on. And so, through the grace of God, I'll be able to pull it off. So far, so good. It's been so pretty far. successful thus far. You're so impactful, so. I try to be. We know it'll be successful. Yes. Now, you also knew Kobe Bryant. Yeah, I did. Rest his soul. Yeah. What did you love most about him? <clears throat> Kobe Bryant. Thank you. Kobe Bryant might be the most brilliant athlete I've ever seen in my life. Mm -hmm. um, his level of intellect yes. was just off the charts. He spoke three different languages fluently, English, Spanish, and Italian. Um, I believe he was trying to master Mandarin and German. Uh, I think he might have, he might have, I never heard him speak it to me, but wow. he was talking about doing it. Knowing him, he probably did it. Um, Five-time champion, league MVP, uh, you know, Hall of Famer, one of the greatest ever, but his level of focus and determination. I remember when I had my show, quite frankly, on ESPN2 in 2005, and, you know, I was feeling all hyped about myself, and I was like, man, they talking about I got a chance to be the next Oprah. And he looked at me and he said, forget Oprah, mm. Harpo. Mm. Harpo. He said, you do her. And he told me this in 2005, you do her 
you, you do her a disservice when you just think of her as Oprah because she's so much more than that. This is what she brings to the table. She's a businesswoman. She's an entrepreneur. She's a producer. She's a boss, right. not just a talent. Remember that. And I never forgot that. And then, you know, years later, obviously 15 years later, 2020, he and I saw each other about three weeks before he passed away when we were both partying in Hollywood for New Year's Eve. And it was the happiest I had ever seen him. It was the first time in all the years that I've known him, and I had known him since 1996, and it was the first time that I ever saw him where he was feeling no pressure. Mm. It was like, yeah, I'm going to accomplish this. I'm going to move forward and strive to do this in the future. But everything I set out to do, I did. And he was such at peace, and his wife was just a few, his wonderful wife, Vanessa, was just a few feet yes. away when he was talking to me. And he was such, I'd never seen him that happy, that at peace. And that's why it just hit me so hard when he ultimately passed away. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So you're very open and honest, like all the time. What's that like? That well, let from? me say this to you. <laughs> I am a very honest person. Uh -huh. Open, not so much. <laughs> I, 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 I firmly believe, see, I don't believe that we should waste our energy lying to folks. There's nothing wrong with telling somebody, I'm not touching that, no comment, or mind your damn business. Right. There's absolutely nothing wrong with that. See these people that go through all of this effort, lying to folks all the time, I don't understand it. <laughs> There's none of your business. I ain't answering that question. Go someplace. It's very, very simple. Or you tell them if you're comfortable enough to answer whatever question they pose to you. And so much energy is expended trying to convince somebody to see what you want them to see instead of being yourself and letting them see whatever it is that they want to see. You can't waste no energy with stuff like that, you know? It's a and, life class right here. And you here. got people, like, for example, we, we, you see people inside and outside of Hollywood and beyond. You know, I've had many of them come up to me, how do you do it? Because the trolls are messing with them, and they can't take what these people are attacking me. I said, why do you read it? Who told you you got to read what they say? Right. Who told you you got to pay attention to their negativity? Now, don't get me wrong. Sometimes I'm, I'm I mean, I'm not, I'm not a Twitter troll or anything like that. But by virtue of the hosting a debate show every day, being a part of the debate show, sometimes you got to be critical. Mm -hmm. And I understand that. Mm -hmm. But I'm talking Product. about your game. I'm talking about what you do. I'm not talking about who you are. Mm. Because I got love for people. Mm. And I want everybody to succeed. I don't want to succeed and be at the top by myself. I want everybody to succeed. But in the process of doing that, you got to distinguish the difference between truth and negativity. But at the end of the day, if the truth is negative to you, if a falsehood is negative to you, you don't have to pay attention and give your time and energy and spirit to stuff that really is not good for you. Ignore it. Don't read it. Don't read it. Remember, you, got, you have social media pages and stuff like that. You have that to put out what you want to put out. Right. You don't have to read these comments about you. 99% of the time, I don't read them. They say, Stephen A., did you see what they say about you? Nope. Nope, and don't bring and it to don't me care. either. And don't care. When I want to see it, I'll go look for it. If I don't look for it, clearly I didn't care. Let's move on. <laughs> hey, well, we gonna, we gonna do just that. Thank you so much for being here. Will you come back and see Anytime us? Anytime for you. Oh, we Anytime. appreciate you so much. Be sure to check out his podcast, No Mercy, wherever you get your podcast. His memoir, Stray Shooter, is available everywhere books are sold. And today, everyone is going home with a copy. We'll be right back. I hope y'all ready to have your minds blown. Please welcome Ring Jedi himself, Danila. Come on out. <laughs>
up close. That was amazing. Wow. Oh my goodness. Now, Hello there. Oh my, that was such an amazing performance. Thank you very much. Now, how did you get into that style of performance? So this is actually called uh, eight rings. It's a type of flow arts. It's uh, not really like classic juggling where you throw and catch things. Mm -hmm. It's called contact juggling because you spin, you do precise manipulations with the rings, and it's all about creating this beautiful, mind-blowing illusion. Yeah, that was amazing. Did y'all see that? Oh my God. So how did you get started in doing this? Uh, about six years ago, I saw a video on YouTube of one guy doing it. And when I saw it, I was like, Oh my God, this is the best thing ever. And uh, <laughs> I asked my dad who worked, um, at that time he worked as a swimming pool engineer uh, to make these rings for me. So he got this like blue piece of plastic that used to be on swimming pools. He cut out these eight rings for me and that's how I started practicing, started performing. Oh my goodness, you're amazing. Thank you. Thank you. Now, I was trying to look real hard to try to study it a little bit. So can, can you show me how to do it a little? Sure, matter of fact. I don't know how far I'm gonna get with these nails, but I'm willing to try. I have a special present for you. you got, oh, you got a present for me? Yeah, I know, I people, I know people bring flowers uh -huh. all the time, so I got a beautiful purple you flower for you. You brought for me a purple! <laughs> and it matches my top. Yeah, so, wait, how do I hold it? eight rings. Like, huh? solid eights. Okay. So you hold them in the middle. Uh-huh. And this one. And let's come to the front. I got that part right, so I'll hold the line. <laughs> <laughs> so one simple thing you can do with them, if you bring them closer together, you create this line of three, mm -hmm. and you can use it as a wheel, like a steering wheel. Mm -hmm. yes. So here, you see already, you keep in the middle ring in the center, uh -huh. and look at someone. Okay, I see all these <laughs> beautiful <around> people. <laughs> all right, you got this one? I think then, so. Then open them back, try to fold them to the side like a book, like this, mm -hmm. perfect. And this one's called butterfly, so you just move them back and forth like this. Oh, yeah, I see. <laughs> It's good, it's good. <laughs> All right, and let's do one final one. This one's called Vortex, Vortex. So you spin this one forward, you oh. spin this one back, oh. and this is the <laughs> Vortex. Oh, Lord. Was that close? <laughs> <laughs> All right, anything looks beautiful with your nails. You see, <laughs> it's about the nails. Wait a minute, let me try one more time. Mm -hmm, go ahead. Okay. Y'all believe in me? Yeah. Yay! Yay! Thank you so much for that. This is amazing. If you want more of Danila, please go to socials at Ring Jedi. We'll be right back. Our next guest is an Emmy-nominated actor who you know from the award-winning series V. Please welcome Matt Walsh. Thank you oh so much gosh. for being here. Thank you for bringing me into your living room. I love it. You are in it's my so living room. It's so cozy. Yay, that's the goal. It's cold. I like it. Oh. It's good comedy weather, as we say. Good comedy weather. I was going to ask you a question. I, was, I thought you had a question. I do have a question. You want my advice? Yes, I do. Okay. I'm not really a good singer, but sometimes actors have to sing. Okay. So what advice would you give to someone with a bad voice who well, has to sing? Well, the first advice would be don't sing. Don't sing? But no. Sometimes they tell you, okay, in this scene, you got to sing a love song to this woman. Well, you know what? I would need to hear you sing. Give me something simple that was, not, I'm like, I have like a range of like a one lane highway, like that. <laughs> so give me something in the middle. Huh. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. Happy birthday to you. You know what? That was sweet right there. That wasn't bad, was it? Okay, Matt. The first lesson is to stay in tune. You just did that, right? Really? Yes. I was on, on tune? You, you was on tune. So if you said, if you were directing it and you said you could give me better, what would you what say? What would I say? Yeah. Well, you got to believe it. Believe that it's your birthday? No, no. <laughs> I, if, the, if that's the subtext that drives you to get you to do it. Okay. You know, because it's all about the emotion. It's not oh. even about right notes. You know, you just gotta, so can you sing it like you really mean that it? That I'm really happy for your birthday? Yeah, it's my birthday. Okay. Uh, come on. Come on, all right, little, okay. Uh, happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Jennifer. 
Happy birthday to you. Is that better? I like the better? first one better, man. <laughs> it was better, see? It was. No, but see, I, I like. you try too hard. I, I love, it's all about the energy. There is no right or wrong notes. I tell people this all the time. It's, it's just the joy. We sing when we're happy, right? Or when we're feeling good. Yeah. So it's about that energy and seeing your glory. I don't even care if your notes is right or wrong. As long as I see you happy as hell, I'm happy for you. Really? Yeah. OK. But until then, you keep acting and doing everything else. I don't, then... <laughs> Meaning don't, don't go into the singing <laughs> business. <laughs> But you can't. If you it, keep <laughs> acting, sweetie. Yeah, you just, just keep acting, sweetie. Because you do such a wonderful <laughs> job here at the you Happy just Place. Make them laugh. <laughs> and make them laugh. Because music is more powerful than comedy. That's you think true. so? Hundred percent. Really? You, ne you never see a wonderful singer open for a comedian. It's always the other way around. It's like here's something pretty good, and here's the real show. Oh. It's true. It's more powerful because music transports you and reminds you of what we can be, how perfect the world could be. It transports you, and comedy always reminds you we're just dumb, stupid people. <laughs> it's always like knocking us down to be human, and that's, <laughs> that's why music is more powerful. Okay. <laughs> no, but that was, that was good no. It's true, though. It's you, true. You know what? I have to say this, because you said normally comedians, well, singers that have comedians open up, and when I got to open up for Aretha Franklin, I was the, I, apparently I was the first singer she allowed to open up for her, and up until that point, it was always comedians. Yeah, yeah, but there'd never That's be. Interesting, right? There's never a comedian who could come on stage after Aretha Franklin, ever, okay. because people would just leave. They just <laughs> well, they saw the best part, and they're like, "Let's go, honey. Par <laughs> Let's get out of the parking lot before it gets crazy." <laughs> well, you know, keep at it. I w <laughs> You're sweet. I no, I appreciate your uh, advice. Thank you. I'm so happy to have you here. <laughs> You're from I Chicago. Was, I am from Chicago, South Side. South Side? 103rd and Kedzie. Oh my God. You know that area? Sort of? of course I do. I'm okay. from Chicago. Mount too. Cream, but I know you are. So you got started in a company in Chicago. What was that like? Co Chicago's a great city for uh, being poor and doing <laughs> what you love. And there's an audience that supports comedy, so it's a great city. And I, I got into Second City. And I was able to do nice. pranks and, and make a living. And I, but I started in psychology. I was going to be a psychologist. Really? Yeah, so I was doing psychology during the day, taking grad school. And then at night, I was doing comedy shows and drinking too much. And then <laughs> I would have to go to work in the morning and pretend I was an adult. So eventually, I realized that I was better at comedy because the stakes in psychology are too high. It's, if you screw something up in comedy, they, you don't get a laugh. But if you screw something up in psychology, the repercussions could be more severe. Mmm, I love some psychology, though. That's interesting. Yeah. Now, you have, you have any jobs in improv? I had many jobs to pay the bills. I would do anything, almost anything, not prostitution or anything, but anything. <laughs> I know you didn't think that. But, um, <laughs> and so I did, like, mock trials where you study, you, you play a criminal, and then law students interview you on, on, uh, in a court case. So I did that. Secret shopper, dressed like an elf on Michigan Avenue, giving away Frango mints. Really? Wearing tights that showed my boxers. That, I'm not proud of that. And one. did you sing a song with it? I didn't, uh, I didn't have to sing. Okay. I did singing telegrams. <laughs> and you did? I did. It just did reminded me of a nightmare. Yeah, uh, not great. <laughs> not great. I had to audition for a woman who, when I auditioned for her, she turned against the wall and looked at the wall because she got nervous auditioning people. So I was auditioning to the back of someone's head. She got nervous auditioning people? Yeah, she's like, don't take this the wrong way, but I can't handle when people audition for me, so I'm going to face the wall. So she turned the wall and said, go ahead, sing something. Make it make sense. Do 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 do. Oh, oh, you're auditioning? Do 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 do. Do 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 You got it, you got it, you got it. Do. You got it. Hey, will you stick around for a little bit? I would love to. That's crazy. <laughs> More than that, we'll be right back. Ow, 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 burn. Burn's good or burn's bad? It burns good. Oh! Oh, we did it! Oh, yeah! <laughs> Oh my God, that clip was amazing.
Flamin' Hot. Yes. I love Flamin' Hot, first of all. Can you tell us what it's about? Flamin' Hot is about the man who invented Flamin' Hot Cheetos. He was a janitor at the Flamin' Hot, or at the Cheeto factory. Hmm. He called corporate. He said, I got an idea so you can cater to Mexicans. Mexicans like spicy food. So the guy came down and lo and behold, he launched a billion dollar industry. So he was just, yeah, it's really inspiring. Yeah, yeah. That is amazing. Yeah. Now, I'm a fan. Great wig work. I don't know if they can see that. Some great wig work, too. I'm, I'm rocking a really good wig. Yes. Not that that's what the movie's about, of course. That's Jesse Garcia. He plays Richard Montañez, mm -hmm. who is the man, and he's a great actor, too. So. And that is a great wig. Thank you. I see you. Thank you, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I'll wear a wig on the show anytime if you need to, you know, okay. demo some Can wigs. I borrow it sometime? No. <laughs> I have a big head. It would probably come to here. <laughs> the more hair, the better. I'll right. take it. <laughs> so listen, I love some spicy foods. Are you a fan of spicy foods? I don't, I'm not a huge fan of the, the flaming Hot Cheeto. I guess I like uh, a medium hot wing. Uh, so medium, I don't go crazy hot, no. no. Long story short, no. Like, the, the, are you a fan of the flaming Hot Chicken that's so popular now, yeah. like Memphis style? I don't really like that. No? I, I love why. everything spicy. Really? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. Anybody else? Do you make anything for yourself that's like simple spicy, like your chili or something? Mm -mm. No. No. <laughs> I need spice on top of spice. Spice on top of spice? Yes. I like spicy Thai food. See, okay. I love a spice, like yes, you get yes. it and then you go crazy. That's the one I like to spice up. That's the only thing you like to spice up? Yeah, with. other than that, yeah. Man. It works for me. Even the flaming Hot, put me a little hot sauce on top of it. Really? Yeah. Listen, okay. <laughs> really? Yes. Now, okay, so you're really into pickleball? Yes. Can you tell us what that is and how did you get into it? Because I've never heard of it. Uh, pickleball was something I picked up during the pandemic. I think I played it at Julia Dreyfus, had a court that she invited us to play on. And then I picked it up during the pandemic. So we taped a court in our driveway and we were able to play during the pandemic. And pickleball is basically, you're standing on a ping pong table. Mm -hmm. Just imagine that. You're standing on it. Yeah, I mean, that's basically the game and you just hit like a, a ball back and forth. And the only different rule is there's a thing called the kitchen, which is kind of like the, the lane in basketball. You can't step in there unless the ball bounces there, if that makes sense. And that's really it. That's it. Okay. And it's fun and it's easy. And if you're of average athleticism, you can be good right away, which, which I love. <laughs> Like you would play, have you played? No. You would step into pickleball and 10 minutes into it, you'd be as good as you're probably ever gonna be. Okay. But, <laughs> but you could play. You could play really well. Okay. For real, it's like a simple game. Now you must be a pro, cause you're featured in the official pickleball well, that magazine. Is, this is true. I was uh, like a five page spread, no big deal, in pickleball magazine, <laughs> whatever. Yes. That's my driveway, yes. that's my driveway. Um, and it's kind of like an EGOT in a way to, to be in Pickleball Magazine. Yes. We're sort of similar in that way. Okay. It's like a Lifetime Achievement Award or Time Man of the Year <laughs> or Sexiest Man in People Magazine. Yes. I mean, this, my I career just that. took off after this. It's a huge deal. It's not a so center So you the Woods of Pickleball. Yeah, it's like Sexiest Man, the really. LeBron James of Pickleball. Yeah, yeah. I could see that. <laughs> Listen, that is amazing. So you know what? This is called the House of Plentifulness. And since you love some pickleball, we got you a little something. For real? Yes, we did. Oh my God, you're giving we me a car? We celebrate everything. You're giving me a car. No, I'm not giving you a car, but I got oh, you for real? some pickleball paddles. And maybe you could teach me how to play and I could oh. add it to my EGOT. Those are beautiful. You like them? Yeah, I really do. That's really sweet. Thank you. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit jenniferhudsonshow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.